Hi, this is Tarek Sami, Yasu and Manos Bulakis, and this is case 147 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Intervention. This is a case that was complicated with acute vessel closure and the events that followed. The patient presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. Coronary angiography showed a significant disease into the LAD with a 90% heavily calcified and tortuous lesions. There were also lesions into the circumflex and a 90% lesion in the distal right coronary artery that was also heavily calcified. The patient underwent an attempt for recanalizing the LAD, however, the attempt was unsuccessful and was complicated by acute vessel closure. Fortunately, the patient remained stable. He did not require emergency surgery, likely because he had a, a good collateral network. And then he was referred two months later for a repeat attempt for revascularization. In the meantime, there has been restoration of flow into the LAD. He still has a heavily calcified, uh, tortuous, and eccentric lesion in the mid LAD with a diagonal branch that originates right at the occlusion. The distal vessel was small and diffusely diseased. So our plan here was to try different techniques to cross this lesion and then uh, recanalize the vessel, however, minimize the risk of having again acute vessel closure. Given the difficulties before, we started up front with a microcatheter. This is a Keravel microcatheter, and with a very soft SUO or three guide wire that is unlikely to dissect. However, the wire kept on entering into the extra black space. We finally switched to a Sion black, non tapered polymer jacketed guide wire that actually, after multiple attempts, went into the diagonal branch. This is an event in which we don't want to pull back the wire and try to advance it into the LAD because it may not go and then we've lost all the progress we have made. So in cases like this where the wire goes into a side branch next to the distal true lumen, the best way to deal with them is to use a dual lumen microcatheter. This is a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter. This is a two operator maneuver. One operator is moving the dual lumen microcatheter back and forth and the other operator is probing with a guide wire, in this case with a Sion Black, and here the guide wire actually successfully advanced to the middle AD past the area of the occlusion. We do not want to perform stenting over this guide wire, so the Keravel microcatheter was reinserted and was used to exchange the Sion Black for a workhorse Sion Blue guide wire. But then we had difficulty crossing with the balloon, we could not cross with a 1.5 millimeter balloon and then a 1.0 millimeter sapphire actually wraps so when we try to inflate it at the proximal cap. So what to do next? This is the algorithm for balloon and crossable CTOs. We did try the sapphire and the 1.5 balloon in this case, including rupture of the balloon, the so-called grenadoplasty. The next step is typically to increase support, use a guide catheter extension or anchoring techniques, if that doesn't work, uh, use a specialized microcatheter, such as the tornus or uh, the uh, turnpike um, spiral, or use the wire cutting technique, use laser atherectomy or various extra plaque techniques. In this case, since we were able to advance the caravel, we reinserted the caravel and were able to advance a rotor wire floppy into the distal LED. We then did uh, a few runs of rotational atherectomy with a 1.5 millimeter burn. Typically, the 1.5 is the preferred one, as the risk of um, causing uh, of becoming entrapped is low compared with the 1.25 millimeter burn. We gave a vasodilator first, nicardipine, no pacemaker. It was the LED, and then we were able to perform atherectomy at 150,000 RPM with minimum deceleration. We then were able to successfully expand the lesion with uh, increasingly sized balloons, 1.5, 2.0, and 2.5, and then deploy a 2.5 by 38 millimeter resolute stand, and overlap more proximally with an Orsiro mission, which was Orsiro due to the smaller strut thickness to minimize the risk of occluding the diagonal branches. This is optical coherence tomography to optimize deployment given the challenges in this case. You can see distally there is an area of dissection. Here is the standard segment that seems to be well expanded. 
there is some tissue protrusion, maybe some minimal thrombus formation, but the stent seems to be well expanded. There's some malaposition, mild in the middle portion of the stent. And then as we go in the proximal edge of the stent, we then see that there is actually a medial dissection. So this is an example where we have um, a dissection happening on both the distal as well as the proximal edge of the stand. We can actually see this uh, pretty well in the longitudinal uh, section. There is a pretty big dissection, and this is something that uh, is important to cover, especially at the distal edge. So when to treat medial dissection? Not always, but if it is three, more than three millimeters in length, and if it involves more than one quadrant, more than nine degrees arc, then it should be treated, and both the proximal and distal dissections, in our case, fulfill this criteria. Uh, we had pinched uh, the origin of the diagonal branch. Uh, that's why we uh, actually rewired the diagonal branch and performed balloon inflation there, followed by placement of a 2.0 millimeter stand distally, and then placement of another larger 2.75 by 8 millimeter stand uh, more proximally, again, jailing the diagonal branch. But we did have a good flow in this vessel. So in this patient, we were able to successfully recanalize the LAD. We were able to successfully cross it, unlike the first attempt, and uh, then restore flow into the vessel. It did require a therectomy and multiple stents for expansion. And also, we did have a dissection in both the proximal and the distal edge. And this is one of the lessons when treating uh, heavily calcified vessels, which is that uh, we want to uh, be conservative with the balloon sizing and the stent sizing and the balloon inflation and the stent deployment inflation to minimize dissections at both edges. Most dissections do not do treatment. However, if it is uh, more than three millimeters in length and involves more than one quadrant, then uh, performing stenting makes sense to, minimi to minimize the expansion of the dissection. So in summary, uh, heavily calcified tortuous lesions are at high risk of acute vessel closure, as happened in this case. Wiring was successful with a polymer jacket wire going into the side branch and then using a dual loan microcatheter. It is important to have the algorithm for balloon and crossable lesions, and then prepare very carefully and meticulously prepare the lesion, and then stand it uh, with um, intravascular imaging to ensure that a nice final result has been achieved in this vessel. Thank you.